This is episode 73 of our Road to Unicum, and today I review the LT432. This is the tier 8 premium Russian light tank that was just released, and I got my hands on it because I just joined the North America Community Contributor Program, so I'm pretty excited about that and looking forward to seeing what that entails. We're going to look at the LT432 in a pair of battles, this tier 10 Overlord and a tier 9 Cliff battle. This tank has some unusual characteristics for a light tank, and one thing to notice right off the bat is how good the max gun depression is. So if you look at this, you can see the gun depresses very well. That's 7 degrees of gun depression, which is much better than the, the typical 5 degrees of gun depression that you see with Russian light tanks and medium tanks. The profile of the tank is also very low. In some ways, it looks like a a down-tiered version of the T100LT in terms of having a very low profile, like a very flat turret and a low hull. And like the T100LT, it also has meaningful armor. The turret enemy tanks need about 200 millimeters of penetration to penetrate with consistency. And if you hit anywhere along the edges of the turret, it's thick enough that you're going to auto bounce. And after firing since I was spotted, of course, I'm going to wiggle here a little bit just in case it already happens to be looking my way. And it's not just that the turret is strong. The hull armor frontally offers about 160 millimeters of effective armor. And I'm going to get a nice flanking shot here. First shot advantage because that M46 was spotted and I was sitting behind those bushes. Now, unfortunately, that P44 Pantera I shot earlier looks like he was pre-aiming in my direction. You don't want to get too predictable at where you're poking. The gun also handles pretty well in this tank, and it has better than average DPM compared to the tier 8 tech tree tank. So it has a whole bunch of things going for it, as well as having a reasonably accurate, fast aiming gun. So uh, you'll hear people throw around words like overpowered. I try not to use that expression too much, but this is a very strong tier 8 light tank, and the armor is better than a lot of tier 8 medium tanks, right? So that's where you kind of get into a little bit of a balance problem. By the way, I should note, like if you look on the map where are WZ120 and there are AMX1390, some players like to go there at the beginning of the match just to peek and get you know, some initial spots. You can't hang out there because it's not already safe and you can get hit by snipers in the back. What I prefer to do, you can go to F6 from the side early just to peek, but what I find more important is getting over to the 9-0 line, which is you know what I told my team I was going to do, and the reason why is you can spot a lot of their backline snipers, and even potentially already if their already is around A9, A0, depending on their position, right? Uh, but by getting to this place here, there are ridges with very good fields of fire, and the ridges have a bush line on them, right? So that gives me the opportunity, you know, if I'm on top of the ridge line in the bush, I can outspot tanks who won't see me, which means I'll get the first shot advantage, and then after firing, I can pull down behind them. So, you know, I find that the eastern side of this map is by far the most important one to use. And check this out because my tank is such a little pancake, that little rise that was between me and the Lorraine 40T was enough for me to hide my hull armor. So, all you can see is the probably the upper part of my turret, which is pretty strong, right? And, you know, again, it's, as long as you keep that turret facing towards guns, you'll bounce, you know, even 200 plus millimeters of penetration, like you'll see me do it right there. I was looking at him with my turret, I just bounced, you know, a shell from that Striv S1, which has very good penetration for a tier 8 premium. And this tank is very forgiving because of the way it's structured, right? Like I said, small profile, strong turret, strong hull. And then, you know, offensively, you know, with the fast reload, which gives you good DPM, good gun handling, it allows you to snapshot and, you know, being able to fire every, in this case, like for with me in this tank with a very experienced crew, every 4.3 seconds, or every under five seconds, you can keep opponents chain track, which is great. Now, the, I think the only thing that's an issue with this tank, and it's true of some of the other tier eight light tanks, is it only has 380 meters of view range. And by the way, this is sweet. I've managed to get perpendicular to these guys and trying to land a tracking shot there on the Luva. There's really almost no reason to go beach because, you know, this Luva's been sitting down here, probably not doing much of anything in terms of helping his team. And that's why we talk about like beach. It's so isolated. You can't see anywhere except a long beach and the cliffs on top of beach. Right? Um, but back to what I was saying before, about the 380 meters of view range, to get to 445 meters of view range, you need to have optics and brothers in arms and situational awareness, and then something that boosts your crew skills. So for example, you can 
uh, use vents, which is what I'm now doing, uh, or you could use food. Now, similar to the T100LT, this tank has very low dispersion values due to movement, and so this is one of the very few tanks in the game. The T100 light tank is one of the only other ones I can think of offhand where I don't feel the need to use vertical stabilizer because the gun handles so well, because there's so much, so little bloom or dispersion when you're moving your turret and driving. It, it doesn't really, you know, having V-Stab will help a, a bit with this tank, but it's not as needed. And so what I've done, what I'm running with now is I'm running with optics and rammer and then vents and so that allows me to get to 440 748 meters of view range without having to use food now this is rough r5100 came around the corner with me i wouldn't have done this if i were in his shoes because he's got such a long aim time and he's gonna die without even having being able to be reloaded which you know it's too bad for our team and notice the troll armor of that enemy lt 432 I bounced off the side of his hull and I need to get out of here and thankfully you know this tank has a low profile and is fast so they're only going to get one shot at me I do want to stay up on this plateau I could run around where the T43 is but if I do that I'm going to be susceptible to fire not only from their arty but from that progetto which is an auto reloader so you have to treat it like an auto loader and assume it's got three shells in its magazine unless you're sure now this particular position here uh, this northeast corner of G2 is very strong and originally when I was going up to the E3 plateau I was trying to spot their tanks that were heading east or heading mid and so you can get flanking shots on them when they're not looking at you you give targets for your RD but you know unfortunately because they're the range 40T and their LT432 pushed around the corner which by the way I wouldn't do from the north spawn it's too exposed uh, I was, I had, I couldn't stay up on E3 at all and do any meaningful spotting. Now you might be wondering why aren't I leaning out more to shoot on that Lorraine 40T? Well, first of all, I don't know until now where their 432 was. And notice I back up a little bit, fully aim in, and then pull back so that I can get that first shot advantage, and you'll have minimal time to fire back at me. All right, I do take a shot there from that Eagle 7, but it looks like it didn't penetrate my armor. But you have to be really careful. You don't want to chase damage. You know, obviously as a light tank, you're you want to make sure to spot as much as possible. You also want to work in your gun, but not chase damage. So if I had fired on the 40T, I would have taken refer return fire from the LT-432 and probably from their Progetto. Right? So you want to be really careful about that. And I really need to stay here for a number of reasons. One, I need to stay here while that Lorraine is still alive, as well as that LT-432. We don't want to see control the plateau. And where I am is a really strong position. You know, this, you, know you always hear me talk about that magical trifecta of having a good field of fire and hard cover and adjacent soft cover that was a bad shot on my point uh, part I should have been aiming lower on that mirror tank I should have been aiming um, either on the lower hull which has a lower armor value or aiming towards the side of his tank but you know regardless you know the fact that my gun which has a pretty good amount of penetration just bounced off of his hull. You know, it gives you an idea. You can really troll people with the LT-432. As a matter of fact, if you were facing a same or lower tier light tank, you could do what a lot of Russian medium players do. You could charge at someone and just face tank them, right? Because if they're if they're looking at your upper hull or especially at your turret, they're going to have a hard time to penetrate that frontally. And this T-49 is making the mistake, common mistake, you know, I talked about this back in my is it episode 41 or 42, I think it was 42, that in-depth guide on light tanks that I talked about where he's over scouting, he's overexposing his tank. He shouldn't be on the south side of the hill at this point of the game. It's too early. We have too many guns alive. And you know, one of the nice things about playing the LT-432 is because of the super high rate of fire, you can keep punishing tanks. You, know, you have a lot of opportunities to deal damage. And then right there, again, there's that first shot advantage. In that case, the Oni hadn't even fully exposed his turret yet when I shot the front part of his tank, hoping to track him. It didn't track him, but that's okay. And so he didn't even spot me. Right Now, this particular place where I am, you can get damage from tanks at mid, where the, their LT-432 is. And remember, their Eagle and their Projecta were there earlier. Um, but if you back up kind of toward the back corner, you can hide about 75-80% of your tank behind the rock that's just to my left. And, you know, moreover, this tank is a small profile. Okay, so, you know, one common thing, you might be wondering, why aren't I charging the Oni, right? Go around that rock that's just the northeast of me. Several reasons. One, if I do that, obviously the Oni can fire on me. 
and the Progetto 46, and the LT42, and their arty, it's really their arty I'd be concerned about, because that splash damage and that stun could easily track you and disrupt your ability to drive well. Um, plus, their Striv 103 hasn't been spotted, and you know I, I have to assume he's at the very popular sniping location of A5. Right, so it's too early to give up this position, and I want to be here because I still want to counter spot that LT432 in case he poke, pokes his you know nose across the E ridge line. The other thing to take into account, obviously, is I only have 400 hit points left. You know, I took like 500 damage right off the bat, and then you know later I think I got shot by the eagle. And right there, our, our T43, he was he had taken a lot of damage early too, and then was being smart for a long time about not overexposing his tank. But in that case, you know he pushed up too far to the east and since he was there is no bush there when you look you're looking bare right so you're easy to get spotted and you know that Progetto you have to assume he's got three shots in his clip if he hasn't fired and here they're LT432 he's in a tough position right so I fired on him because I get the first shot advantage he didn't see me obviously he spots me after I fired but I could pull back behind the rock he gets splash bar already which stuns his crew that gives me time to aim in and you know I, this guy actually messaged me after the battle the, the main thing you don't want to do is like you can't charge someone at this position here, right? Where I am, you can try to snipe them from, you know, if you're on the other side of the map from E6, you can try to snipe and fire down here. But otherwise, you just have to just assume that they're there because he can't push toward me without me having the first shot advantage since I have the bush here. And I can have the luxury of pulling back behind the rock and have Artie support me. That right there, by the way, is so sweet on the Eagle 7. Two straight tracking shots, but, you know, you can do that when you've got this, you know, super fast sub five second reload. Right, it, it just allows you so much flexibility in terms of dealing damage and chain tracking opponents. Uh, but you know, you, if if someone's in a really hard to get location, you can't force chasing them unless it's late in game. You have a numbers advantage. You've got hit points to work with. You know, otherwise you're just you're you're really risking throwing your hit points away, especially against the tank like the LT432, which actually has meaningful armor. You can't chase the damage. And then here, this is unfortunate for me. The Striv gets off the shelf. I was coming to the left to open up the angle that I have on him, you know, in case he stayed up on that A5 shelf, but instead he kind of pushed down and was attacking the Progetto. So this tank really doesn't have you know any downsides uh, that I can think of. Really, just the the view range of 380, which some of the tier 8, you know, Russian light tanks have, which is below average, and it's a pretty capable damage dealer. Like here, you can see, you know, I worked in about 3,000 damage, second only to our tier 9, you know, 705 bully tank, and you know, the Striv, which is a fantastic damage dealer, and you know, about half of my damage was dealt from range. It speaks to the gun's accuracy and good gun handling, you know, that good DPM. It's really capable of pumping out damage, and. Uh, you know, you can kind of see like my first 15 battles this is playing solo. This win rate, obviously, 80%, I'm not going to be able to sustain, but because of the mechanics of this tank, I can deal pretty good damage. It's very good for spotting. And, you know, I, I think it's one of those tanks which light tank drivers are going to really enjoy playing. And like I said, it's very forgiving of mistakes. So I hope you enjoyed this video. If you've got the LT432, let me know what you think of it. Take care.